Hey, in this episode on the Homestead Building Project series, we're going to be building the chicken fence for the chicken yard. I need to keep my chickens separate and give them their own space. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. This is my chicken coop. This is my homestead. This is the Homestead Building Project Series. Every once in a while, I add a new feature or an adventure to the episodes that you guys can enjoy. But today, I, I'm going to finish the chicken yard fence so I can seclude the chickens and isolate them from the rest of the livestock because the chickens are in and of themselves becoming a real nuisance. When my geese and my ducks are trying to nest, the chickens will go into the nesting boxes and start scratching all the straw out, looking for seeds and whatever, but they're kicking all the eggs out of the nest. They're making a mess out of everything. So I had to take the ducks and the geese and segregate them into their own areas to keep them separated from the chickens. I pretty much like my chickens to run around free range, but now that I've got my garden planted, they're even making a nuisance of themselves in the garden. They're digging up the seeds. Well, I took, I, 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 I took care of that. I put my deer fencing up so the deer can't even get into the garden. But uh, the chickens, they're just misbehaving. They get on my deck, they poop all over the deck, they just get everywhere. I want the chickens segregated to their own space. So this will be the chicken yard. I'm just gonna complete the fencing and uh, yeah, let me show you what I have so far. I got a couple of rolls of this fencing right here from an estate cleanup along with the fence posts. Now these, these fence posts are not robust at all. They're very thin, they're, they could bend real easy, but they'll hold the fence upright. I just have to secure them in with good solid uh, four by fours. I'm gonna go ahead and paint this four by four uh, green and we're gonna tighten the fence up, secure this fence that I got free, and then put this last post in about halfway between here and the chicken coop. Now, this only gave me enough fencing just to do this run right here. I had to buy an additional roll of fencing to uh, finish the other side, but that's okay, we got additional rolls left. I'm going to create another yard for my geese completely separate from everything and gives the ducks a larger enclosure but the geese will have a separate area where they can actually have a, a nice separated area for their nesting boxes and to raise their goslings. Once their goslings are hatched and everybody's uh, done, we're going to turn them loose and let them go down and frolic on the pond but I have to protect them from predators that come around. Recently we had a problem with a skunk. I took care of that little stinker. Yeah, we dispatched them. So, and I didn't even get sprayed. I did it a smart way. I uh, also have to worry about fox. We have problems with fox, uh, among other things. So, let's get this painted, put this fence post in, and then I'm gonna pull the tractor out because I gotta dig this hump out and make a nice level area that re declines, inclines down to the chicken coop so it'll be it'll do what it's supposed to do now i'm going to leave the fence post tall because i'm going to mount bird houses on the top of each fence post and it gives a nice little area for little bird houses they control insect population and that's what we want plus it'll give a nice cap to the pole and uh, prevent water from seeping down inside the pole and rotting it out. Yep, nice little natural cap. Okay, we're gonna let that dry and I'm gonna go fix my staples for um, fixing the fence to the, uh, to this post. 
This conduit here is going to be my fence tightener. Stay tuned and I'll share with you guys how I'm going to tighten my fence and apply the staples. I featured this tool before in a uh, fencing um, episode. I I love this thing. It does multiple things, but I use it to prepare the staples to squeeze them together because if they're spread apart, like uh, this one, they don't hammer in so easily. They like to splay out and I don't like that. So we just take it and squeeze it together and do that to all the staples. Now, all we have to left to do at this moment, we got the staples prepared, we got this painted. Now we just stand here and watch paint dry. Just kidding, I've got much stuff to do. Okay, now that's the, the now that the paint is dry on that post. I'm going to go ahead and secure this side of the fence in up here. Okay, now that that's done and the paint is dry, let's go secure the corner post. I did put these um, fence posts, the wimpy ones, uh, every 10 feet I spaced them all the way down to this corner post. Well, the last one is a little bit closer. We're just going to leave it at that. Okay. Now we have to trim this fence off. I have to trim this fence off here because this goes on an incline and the fence needs to be stretched and pulled to uh, meet the demands of the contour of the land. So let's get the bottom secured and stretched. My fence stretcher. Got a screw in right here that I can get this close to the pole and then stretch it and it keeps it close to the fence. Now once I'm satisfied I've got the bottom tight enough, I always attach the bottoms first. Now I'm going to attach my staple. And then I'm going to do the same up here. Okay, now that top and bottom are stretched tight. Now with this type of fencing, I just secure it to these tabs and make sure that they're, they secure in, in place. Okay, that stretch is done. Now I got this stretch to do. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is very uneven terrain. It's even here, but then it takes a dip down here to the uh, chicken house. And it's going to leave a gap. So I'm going to go ahead and get the tractor and kind of dig this out and make it more level. So I can get a nice good ground for the bottom wire of the fence and get it sealed to keep predators out and keep the chickens in. 
So let's crank the tractor up and get this job done. I got the keys right here. Okay, we'll deal with that. So that's how I deal with projects like that uh, with my tractor, with my free tractor. You want to know how I got that tractor free? Well, I'm going to leave a link up here and I'll show you guys how that lady made a grown man cry. Literally, literally, not figuratively. What a gift. Uh, blessing. And it just all stems from being kind anyway I'll also leave a link down below in the description and also at the end of the video but uh, it's my treasure hunting series check that out look at how I built the whole homestead for cheap and most often free uh, so let's continue the fence yep this is the still the free fence we're working with and we'll close the, this gap and get the chicken yard done Okay, I got this two by four I'm gonna place right here. And it's to fasten the other end of the fence to. We're just gonna fasten it right here. Let's see. Gonna measure the distance between here, come on, there, here, and here. Sixteen feet six inches. So it's eight feet three inches is halfway. I usually space all of my T posts and other fence posts at least. 10 feet at least, minimum 10 feet. I can go under, but I don't want to go over because then I lose the rigidity and support of the fence because of all the predators and other wildlife that come against that fence. <sighs> that fence has to be a fortress. 
to protect the livestock. And that's why I'm putting up this fencing is to protect the chickens because everything out there wants to eat a chicken, including me. Okay, it's time to put the fence in place. I put the bottom on first, then the top, and then I stretched the fence. Okay, let's see if I can get this stretched appropriately. Okay. Stick that in there. And then use this block as a leverage to keep it in place. Now that concludes this adventure. We got the chicken fence, the chicken yard all fenced in. So uh, there's a gap I have to cap down in the creek bed because the chickens can get in and out of there. Uh, so once I got that plugged, uh, they will be contained to this chicken yard. And I, my wife will be happier because she just does not like to step out on the deck and there's a pile of chicken poop there. Yeah. So this fence I put up the other day and yesterday I went down and got some uh, <coughs> landscaping. I've got some uh, two rhododendron bushes uh, for in here as a ground cover and to, uh, also to grow out and provide some covering for the chickens to be able to go underneath to get uh, refuge from hawks. And then I have this lilac bush. That thing grows a big, uh, big lilac bush. Plus, the rhododendron and the lilacs will provide feed for my bees. Stay tuned to that video. That's coming up next on my beekeeping video. They survived winter. Yay. <laughs> anyway, this concludes this episode on uh, the chicken fencing and the chicken yard. They've got a big yard to go and hunt and scratch in. Uh, like I said earlier, that I need to uh, cover this area down here in the creek bed. It's a big gap down there, so I've got some chicken wire. I'll just zip tie to that and get it going and maybe lay in some cement along the creek floor and maybe create a little pool down here for the chickens to go down and get water and also the bees so they can go get some water nearby their hives too. Well, I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. This is Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. We're a frugal homestead tucked up in the Cascade Ranges of the Pacific Northwest. Please stay tuned to more videos. You could do that by number one, subscribe. And also uh, click that bell icon, which alerts you to new videos as I upload them after you subscribe. Hey, we just hit a landmark. Uh, uh, it, we crossed the threshold of over 5 million views. Yay, really, I mean, yay. Uh, so stay tuned to those. Uh, give us a thumbs up, thumbs down, I don't care. Uh, just show us in some engagement and also leave a comment. Click that share button. Sharing my videos on your social media platforms helps us out. Please be safe and yes, please be kind. If you're gonna give a thumbs down, don't say anything, just be kind. Uh, unless it's productive, really, unless it's productive. We'll see you guys in another video. Bye-bye.